Gwenshaw Judkins announces uh, he leaves Ole Miss in the portal. Uh, during the day yesterday, Lane Kiffin had a uh, picture of a fish that he was letting off the hook. Here's catch the Gwenshaw announcement. And then, yes, Brownie, the catch and release there from, from uh, Lane Kiffin. And then that gets us to Jackson Dart uh, on Instagram last night who sends this out and everyone – later deleted – uh, sends this out and everyone says, oh, Jackson calling Quinshawn selfish. Here's uh, what Jackson sent out last night. He was always like, man, if, if you're about yourself, you may be amazing. I would love to compete against you. <laughs> <laughs> Go play for the other team. Because when you're around a bunch of selfish people, and I've that. been around those, yep. you know. Yeah, so that's what Dart sent out. Uh, Brown and wow. I talked about it a little bit yesterday. What was your initial thought when you saw Quinshawn was hitting the portal? Uh, I mean, I was surprised. We touched on it a little bit when I was on with you guys that, you know, pure speculation, it could be a situation where some of these guys that are coming in from the portal are maybe getting more money, or he could just be a bad locker room guy. I would assume it's the latter because if you're a head coach, now it's Lane Kiffin, he does a lot of immature things as a head coach, but if you're Jackson Dart and you're going to completely um, – I, look, I know he left the program, but you have thrown him under the bus now, basically saying he's a selfish player. So there has to be maybe something to that. I, I mean – If I'm, if I'm Lane Kiffin, I'll leave it alone, though. I, Rockstar used to call it vague book. Is that what you called it, Rockstar? It's vague, vague booking. Vague booking. Yeah. So the definition of vague booking is like I post on there, need prayers immediately – you know, and you're like super vague about it. Everybody's like, so are you dying? Is somebody around you dying? Are you hungry? You, did this. you know who you are. Yeah, yeah. That's vague booking, right? Um, and it's dangerous to make assumptions based on vague booking. And that was a little vague, right? There was no description with it. He just shared that, that video. Uh, that was, the, yep. That was the whole post right there. Just a video, no words or anything. But I would say that. I think it's a fairly old video. I don't think that was. Oh, like, it's been around. I mean, yeah. just tell what Brady looks. Yeah, yeah. I know. I don't. I don't think Tom Brady said that yesterday. And Jackson Dart's like, hey, you know, Tom Brady's right. I'm, I'm going to share this with my teammates. So it seems like you had to dig to find that one. So even though there is some vague to it, you can start piecing it together and think, boy, the timing on that is very, very odd. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I, I kind of thought yesterday this looked like Ole Miss has brought a lot of guys in out of the portal. And I want to see kind of where I stand in the pecking order here. And I've gone and I've told them where I think I stand. And they're like, we don't think you stand there. So, all right, let's envision life without me here then. And see, you know, see where I stand in the NIO world when you have to envision life without me here. But it looks like it's going much further than that. Uh, Our buddy buddy Neil McCready was reporting yesterday in his show um, that that he had become a little bit of a a, a tough handle for the coaches. you know, he's a running back who wanted to be a big part of the offensive game plan every week, and he was. You know, Lane Kiffin loves to run the football. Um, but, you know, you you got to let the coaches coach, and you got to play the game. That's how it all works. You can't have 85 coaches. Well, and here's the thing. If you really want to become a team that's competing for championships where Lane Kiffin and the staff, they want to get and where they're, they look like they're heading right now, you got to have a good culture. And if he is creating problems behind the scenes – then you can kind of understand this. I will also say um, the running back position has become a lot more expendable. Did anybody know who Ollie Gordon was before this season? Nope. Nope. Or Cody Schrader from Missouri? Or Kyron Williams right now for the Rams? Well, that's that's what Alex Scarborough, he he had a quote yesterday in his story about Judkins from Lane Kiffin back in the summer. And it was about NIL, and he was like, I wonder how long it will take college and the NIL to catch up to what the NFL perceives the market to be for running backs. And he says it's more valuable to us because we run the ball more than a lot of people do in college. But he was basically saying the same thing that you're saying, that the running back market in the NFL translates down to the running back market uh, NIL-wise in college football. A little bit more valuable in college football, the great running back, but that it shouldn't be as valuable as a great receiver or a great quarterback. Yeah, I think you can still – look, nobody knew who Ollie Gordon was. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco, you know, everybody thought Clyde Edwards Hilaire was going to be the future for Kansas City. Pacheco, a guy from Rutgers, you know, ends up being the guy. So, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's just, it just seems like that is a very expendable position now. I want to go back to something you said. I don't know if you were speculating or if Neil reported this, that the usage might have been, like, I want to be a bigger part of the game plan. Um, 
What do you think the difference in carries between his freshman year and his sophomore year was? Uh, I would put them almost exactly the same. Yeah, I would say probably 25 less carries. I mean, he had basically the same amount of touchdowns, 16 and 15. The, yep. the rushing yards were down a little bit, but he was still second in the conference. I would say, in fact, he probably had a few more carries this year because he sort of eased into that star role last year. Well, I think a, he missed was, a little time. I think it was like 25 less It carries. was actually more last year, but only by three, 274 to 271. So uh, I don't think usage – well, could have been much of an issue. I mean, you got the basic identical usage you had. Now, if you wanted more, like Lance said, though, he wasn't always available this year. That's right. And and I didn't think he had as good a year. I know the numbers ended up being the same. Pretty close. They just didn't seem to be as impactful. I kind but, of agree with you. Yeah. yeah, It seemed like he was a – seemed like his – to your point, impactful. His numbers meant more last year. I just I don't know how many coaches he's going to find that have a more dedicated run game than than Lane Kiffin. And well, I mean, if if it is about usage, I don't know who's going to use you more than Lane Kiffin. Hugh, Hugh runs the ball a lot, not I, as much as Lane Kiffin. Not as much Hugh, as Lane. Hugh Freeze runs the ball a lot. I, I I would like to know what the most carries a Hugh Freeze running backs ever had in a season. I don't know the answer to that. But I'd like to know what it is. I guarantee. I bet you it's not more than what. Well, I mean, first of all, Link well, Kiffin. Just pick out his best year at Ole Miss. All right. What, what year do you think that was? Fifteen, fourteen, or fifteen? Right, or fifteen, sixteen? Whatever the the next to last year was. Yeah, I would say it was fourteen. Uh, and okay, you want me to go fourteen then? In twenty fourteen, Ole Miss's leading rusher was. I can't even find it. This should answer your question right here. Um, I think. Oh my gosh, they don't have oh here it is. Jalen Walton had 106 carries. Yeah. So do was that 14? That was 14. Do 15. Um But you're right. Now that I think about those two Ole Miss teams. He couldn't run the ball consistently. Yeah, they had yeah. that was their problem. They couldn't Yeah, especially short yardage. Yeah. Short yardage they were using Kendichi. That's yeah. how bad they were running the football. And remember it was a short yardage situation yeah. that cost them that game against Arkansas. Eventually yep. gave Arkansas the ball back and that great play. And 15, Jalen Walton led them with uh 142 carries. I mean, it's not even close. And what did Quinshawn have this year? 271. 271. Yeah. yeah. So it's a few more games of carries. And, and what, it, what <laughs> carries. It, was it? Was it Bo Scarborough or Derrick Henry that had all the carries under Kiffin? No, it's Derrick Henry, 395. Yeah, that's. Yeah, 395 carries. Yeah. And now, now yeah. I will say this year, Jarquez Hunter led Auburn. Now, he did not play a full season either, but he led Auburn with 159 carries. Yeah, that's, so that's a little bit more. Derrick Henry's carries under Lane Kiffin, his wife. If you ever see a Daniel Moore painting of Jake Coker, it's going to be from this angle. <laughs> Just the old handoff. And, and you've told Coker that, right? I have. <laughs> he, he, he busts my balls on their show. I so, heard Mick, Mick told me that uh, – they had a nice Jimmy D segment. Yeah, so I just wanted to give it back to you. Yeah. Does this, this look familiar, Coker? <laughs> Malik Willis, I, I think in the entire time he was at Liberty, Malik Willis had the most carries in a single season, if I'm right about this, at 197. So, uh, I mean, he's just, I mean, Hugh is going to throw the ball more than Lane Kiffin is normally. Um, where does he end up? Oh. Yeah, you need three landing spots off the top of your head. Does Auburn make your top three? I mean, everybody's going to point at Auburn because of the proximity of Pike Road. And, you yeah, know, I would the, put it in the top three, though. The, the fact that it is it, the appearance always was Brian Harson fumbled the recruiting, which allowed Lane Kiffin in the door. Yep. Um, and now you've got Hugh Freeze there, and it's a, it's a complete reset. I would say, and I'm just going to, I'm going to be careful how I say this, I would say I would like to know what his relationship was with Carnell Williams. And, and what a factor that would be moving forward. Why do you say that about Carnell because Williams? I said what I said. I said <laughs> I would like to know what so, his relationship is with Carnell Williams and how that would factor into his recruiting to Auburn if he wanted to come to Auburn. Okay, so you're vague. I'm not vague booking. I'm just saying yeah. I'm making an, a, a, a very – there's a reason you pulled I mean, Carnell out. Well, but, but if no, you're, if Carnell you're, was on the previous staff is one reason I pulled him out. If you believe you can, if there is a problem um, that is in the locker room with Quinchon, if you're a guy like Kirby Smart, do you take a look? I mean, Milton and Edwards are gone. Well, they did get uh, ETN from Florida, yeah. so Florida's got an opening. Uh, but, but you know, I, I mean, I, much, mentioned, I mentioned Georgia last night too because uh, I would take Judkins over ETN. I would, too. I think I mean, ETN is like really have, good, too. I'd like to have both, and Georgia could afford both. Well, and you can see, I mean, that could be one of the selling points. Hey, we'll give you more NIL money. You've got a chance to win a national championship, and we're going to split your carries up. Yeah. Florida's got an opening, right? Yep. Um, this is just in the SEC. 
Uh, LSU has a long history of great running backs. Uh, he would be their best running back. Well, here's the thing I would question. If you're Quinshot, if you don't go to a contender, it really does look like a money grab. Because, I mean, I would say right now, if you polled 50 college football so like if he ends insiders, up at, wouldn't it, you say yeah. half would put Ole Miss in the college football playoff next year? Yeah, yeah. and he's a big reason why. Uh, Colorado says Gary. Now, Colorado's always going to be a big, a big name out there. Doesn't seem like an offense. That would uh, highlight me as a running back, but not you know. not not to the level you were highlighted under Lane yeah. Kiffin. Uh, Michigan's going to have a lot of openings. I mean, if you want to get outside the SEC, <laughs> that'd be a heck of a to go from Blake Corum to uh, Quinshawn Judkins yeah. would be a pretty good. I mean, Boy, that's it, a different culture altogether. It, it is, is, but if you tell me that Harbaugh is staying there and they're still going to play, or with Sean Moore, they're still going to play that type of offense. Yeah, I'd look pretty good in in the old maize and blue. Uh, if you want to be an Alabama boy leaving the SEC and going to the Big Ten. You cannot argue their dedication to running the football. Right. They played one game in the conference this year where they ran every play of the second half. And Ohio State runs the ball pretty good. Yeah. They Travion's got, back, though. Yeah, Travion's that's what I was going to say. I don't, yeah. He would split time at best with Travion Henderson, right? Uh, we'll see where Quinshaw, maybe as early as today, we'll find out that yeah. destination because I yeah, agree yeah. with what Lance I mean, says. Uh, you, you don't make this move when you make it without having a, a place already slotted for you. Not like it's free agency, right? Right.